you had Larry Brown as a coach. Oh. And, and when Larry came I, in, I'm like, this is it. You know, we're about to start playing defense, championship pedigree, hometown guys. You know, we all pop my right glass now. here. Hold on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here we 23 go. 23 and 59, man. I mean, That's what was going on in there? And how are you processing this as a rookie? As a rookie, coming from Arizona, all I wanted to do is win. And I say this all the time, like, I didn't care if I go to Antarctica, Russia, Africa, Australia, just put me in a situation to win, give me my role, give me some stability, and I'm gonna go. Mm. We had the most starting lineups in the history of the, of the league, right? 40. 40, 40, 40. starting <laughs> lineups. I don't know if people understand that. So like, there were games where we didn't even know who was starting with 30 minutes left to go on the clock. I have never in the history of my 14, 15 year career been a part of a team so dysfunctional hmm. where he would tell me, I think I got a DMP my first game. He would tell me, Channing, you're doing great. You're gonna get some minutes, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd be ready. And then I wouldn't play the whole game. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I forgot about you. <laughs> We're going with Jerome like, today. Right, oh, but, but like, if and, and now that I know coaches can say, hey, Channing, this week, this is a lineup. We're going to have to like you may get some minutes. Yeah. OK, fine. I could do my workouts based on that. Mm -hmm. Communication was awful. Mm -hmm. uh, his we didn't have anything that was innately ours as a team. Mm -hmm. So we he would start with plays one week, see other teams plays and then adjust those plays to them. Right. I remember. I, I was it started to be like a face up jump shooter do my thing. Mm -hmm. I remember the day after I scored 30 on the number one pick, Andrew Bogan, who had a great career. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I had a thing because I was like, I should have been the number one pick, right? You know, cocky little 22 year old. Yeah. I had 30 that day on um, jumpers. I was moving, I was shaking, mm -hmm. and me and Steph had a good relationship, right? So I, Steph was balling that month. Balling that month. Steph was my guy. Actually, was too. Steph, like, again, he's a person that. When you just talk about like his hoop knowledge, regardless of what you think of him, he's a baller. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Respect the baller Absolutely. and is what are you just trying to make his own way doing his own thing. Now you may not agree with it all the time, but that's him 24 seven. So it is what it is and I respect that, mm -hmm. right? And I could tell him, I don't fuck with that or yes, I'm super down with that, mm -hmm. right? So the next practice, coach goes, Channing, you can't shoot any more jumpers. So I'm like, what? <laughs> Everyone on the team is like, don't listen to him. He's, yeah. he's just he's just saying that. He was like, no, no, no. If you shoot a jumper, you're going to go sit on the side. So obviously, we're running the plays that are meant for me to shoot. Mm -hmm. David Lee is guarding me. He backs up five feet. I dribble and kick the ball out. He goes, good job, son. <laughs> My teammates are like, what the fuck are you doing? Shoot yeah. the ball. So all of a sudden, when you get a rookie where the game is already moving really fast, yeah. who's had some success with the things that he's worked on, have a coach absolutely T-bone that. I just went into a spiral of when to shoot, when not to shoot. And then he didn't play me. And then I didn't was getting DMPs. And then it was all over the place. And it was just like he did that with everybody. Jamal, mm -hmm. Nate, you know, Stephon Marbury. Mm -hmm. And like threw some of you guys under the bus. Dude, it was like he had a way he wanted to coach, and yet none of us were good enough for that way of coaching. Yeah. And I met a lot of coaches, and off the court, I think he's a, a solid human being. Mm -hmm. But as a coach, I disagree with 99% of everything he said. Right? We wouldn't even, when we would play back and forth, when we would have like pickup, he couldn't let us go down. We would have two hour film sessions. He was. He would click like so obviously we're losing a lot. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to see four hours of us losing, right? Like, hey guys, like let's be positive. He was a gigantic dark cloud. Now I don't know what's going on with him yeah. in his personal life. So this is not an attack on him as a person. This is my opinion on his coaching style. Mm -hmm. And I in my 14 years, I think I played for 10 different coaches. So I've seen the gamut. I've seen it all. Yeah. It's not like he's too strict. I played for Scott Skiles and I fuck with him. Mm -hmm. All day, every day. Mm. 
He's a hard ass. Yeah, yeah. Like same sure. drill every day, close out, boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. I get it. I'm cool with that. I could do the work. I'm not afraid of the work. What makes me upset is he never gave us an opportunity as a team to be successful as a team. He never put somebody in their role as this is what you are. You're the top dog. You're the low dog. Yeah. Work your way up. If you can, learn, earn, go. It was like, how can I just move and shake? Guys were starting. If you were from Phoenix, you could start that game. <laughs> he was going with sentiment some nights. That was a couple of the 40. He was like, uh, he's got yeah, more family in here. That's what was crazy about the whole situation. It was like, hold on, like, this guy hasn't played. We had G League guy, Ime Odoka came and played with us. Yeah. And he was starting when we played Portland. <laughs> like, he just came from the G League. Now, Ime can play. He was a G, uh, G League MVP or whatever, D League MVP. So, okay, he can play a little bit, but he's not starting versus the Blazers. Come on. Coach Brown Come. was losing it, man. That That's just surprising, man. You know, a, a tenured Harold League coach like that. That's I tough. don't know what the conversations were between him and the upper management. But between him and any of the players, there's not one player on any of the teams that, or, or, or any player on the team that he coached that would vouch for him and say, he put us in a situation to win every single night, which is against everything that he did yeah. with AI in Philly. Yeah. So I don't know what happened. So, you know, and obviously he's not coaching now, so it is what it is.